Hey guys, what's up? I am back for a new series I want to do. It's basically a little recap of video games that are important to me. Um, I've actually previously done this for Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2 years and years ago. I think the last one I did was like four years ago or something like that. So I figured I would just do one on Metal Gear Solid 3. If you haven't played it yourself, go do it because you're doing yourself a huge favor if you do. If not, then you can just listen to this and you'll still understand the story. Okay. Metal Gear Solid 3 is a prequel. It was the first prequel in the series. It's set in the Cold War era in 1964 when we start our virtuous mission. We are a Fox operative by the name of Naked Snake. That is our code name. We have a support team that is not with us, but they're in our ear talking to us throughout this mission. And that consists of Major Zero, who is running the show. Paramedic, who is our medic, obviously. <laughs> Sigint, weapons, and other helpful tools. And the boss, who is our mentor. And one of the most important people to us, she is our mission advisor and she helped plan the mission with Major Zero. The goal of the Virtuous mission is to rescue a weapons designer slash scientist, Sokolov, because they're going to use his weapons for terrible, terrible things. Shocker. Shocker. I know. And our other objective is to take down an experimental super weapon named the Shagohod, which is a Sokolov design. We find Sokolov and he is burning stuff. He is trying to get rid of all of his notes so that people can't build the weapons themselves. Uh, we got some nice Yoji Shinkawa artwork that is being burned. Sokolov explains that Snake needs to get him out of there as soon as possible because Colonel Volgan of Gru is going to show up. Colonel Volgan is this really, really bad dude, and he wants Sokolov. Sokolov has no idea what he's doing. He tries to do some like Hadoukens, I don't know, and we are off together, and he's gonna be absolutely no help to Naked Snake. Get the hell back. Sokolov. I swear this guy. And boom, just like that, we are surrounded <laughs> by the enemy when we hear some little punk-nosed kid talking to us. And that is none other than a young Ocelot. He's from the Ocelot unit. And these guys have no idea why Ocelot is there. When really, Ocelot is working for Vulgan and he is here to take Sokolov. And guess what? Ocelot kills everybody. Ocelot is a big show off. Ooh, look at me, look at my gun. You're not the boss, are you? No, I'm not the boss. He makes some cat noises, which are completely serious. And he calls his Ocelot unit to surround us and now it's looking like shit again. Ocelot decides to taunt Naked Snake, which is mistake number one. Terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Snake ends up beating the shit out of him. He looks like a little bitch. Sokolov is freaking the hell out and running. Boom, revolver Ocelot is born. <laughs> You're pretty good. And he conks out. So now we have to go chase after Sokolov. We end up catching up to him at a bridge. He thinks he's gonna be murdered or used to make more weapons of mass destruction when he sees the Shagohod, the treading behemoth, capable of launching nuclear missiles. It's the end of phase one, so they still need Sokolov for phase two. As we cross this bridge, we run into the boss, our homegirl, our mentor, our mother, and she's got two big cases with her. And we are like, what the hell are you doing here, boss? What's up with those cases? Why are you jiggling the bridge around so much? We're getting all thrown to the floor and things like that. A bunch of hornets attack. It's terrifying. There's a guy with a tongue. Like stuff's going crazy and Sokolov is taken up into a helicopter. And now we get our first glimpse at Volgan. Volgan is the worst. I would say the worst antagonist in the entire series. He is a piece of human garbage. Boom, we find out that the boss has defected to the Soviet Union. Holy dear God, she's a traitor. She's given him some nuclear warheads as a gift of proving her loyalty to Vulgan. They're missiles from the US. The boss then proceeds to kick the crap out of Naked Snake, breaking his arm and breaking his heart all at the same time. It's rough. It's rough seeing Naked Snake getting the kicked out of him, but it happens quite often, so get used to it in this game. It happens a lot. <laughs> Vulgan wants to kill Naked Snake, but the boss says, no, I'll deal with him. And just like that, whoo, just kidding. Gonna punch you in the gut, throw you off a bridge. Naked Snake reaches for her and ends up grabbing her bandana and boom, bandana is born and every snake shall don one for the end of time. The boss has brought the Cobra unit with her, which consists of a bunch of bad guys we're going to deal with later, but we'll get to that at another point. Naked Snake is messed the hell up and paramedic helps us put ourselves back together. Yikes. On the helicopter, we see Volgan, Ocelot, and a woman. And they think that she is Sokolov's wife. And Volgan takes a liking to her. She ends up having a kiss of death with her. So Volgan knows that she can't simply just be Sokolov's wife, but there's something more to her. But he's going to keep her around because she thinks she's pretty and he's going to find out more about her. Volgan gets super excited about the missiles and has to launch one of them. 
Ocelot doesn't want Volgan to do it because his countrymen are down there and Ocelot is pissed, but no one gives a shit what Ocelot has to say. So they're gonna pretend that the nuke was shot by the boss. Volgan launches a missile at Sokolov's bureau. Naked Snake is full tinned out of the area and we flash forward to a week later. Naked Snake is already put on his next mission, Operation Snake Eater. The president got a call from Khrushchev. Khrushchev explains that they saw on radar that an American aircraft was flying over Soviet soil during the attack, and they are ready to retaliate. Khrushchev demands proof that the American government wasn't involved. The American president explains that a U.S. soldier defected to the Soviet Union a week ago and takes absolutely no responsibility for the aircraft or the nuclear bomb going off. Khrushchev demands that we take care of the boss and Volgan within one week or it could be the beginning of a new world war. Our objectives are to find out what happened to the Shagahod, destroy it, we gotta rescue Sokolov, and then eliminate the boss. There are two KGB insiders at our disposal with the code names Adam and Eva. Adam has infiltrated Volgan's ranks and has a way for us to get in and out of the fortress. So our first objective is to meet with Adam. And then one week later, they send him right back out into the wilderness. While traversing through the forest, Snake comes across a white horse. And who happens to be with the horse? It's the boss. She's back and she's wearing a trash bag. It's fine. She makes fun of our broken arm <laughs> and boom. She kicks our ass again. She makes one of her awesome bandana. She wants it back. She's not getting it back. Our meeting point with Adam is the same place we found Sokolov. Snake is surprised to see a motorcycle chick. This is supposed to be Adam, but obviously it is not Adam because Adam was supposed to be a dude. Adam doesn't know the code word, so it doesn't say anything, but does protect Naked Snake from other soldiers. Adam got hell of a name. Boom, you know whose side they're on. She is a beautiful blonde babe. Naked Snake doesn't mind. <laughs> She's gotta make sure to reveal the cleavage, just so he knows. She's all woman. Naked Snake has no boundaries. But we learned that her name is Eva. Quit looking at the boobs, Snake. She gives Snake a scientist disguise so that he can sneak into the lab where he can get his hands on Sokolov. Snake ends up getting some sleep because his hand is broken and he's just been working his ass off. And we see Eva talking to somebody outside. Boom, Eva butt, no big deal. And the Ocelot unit surrounds the building. Eva and Snake split up and Snake tries to escape and ends up getting caught by Ocelot again. And he has Eva, plot twist. He is so obsessed with the last run-in from a week ago that he's now wearing the bullet that was left over by Naked Snake around his neck. Ocelot is super inappropriate when he finds out that it's a woman and that she's wearing perfume and it was not who he expected. Naked Snake dogs Ocelot's choice in weapon. He has got a revolver since last time, but it's in engraved and it just has no technical advantage at all and so he basically just makes Ocelot feel like a little little bitch about it and boom the gun jams <laughs> and he gets kicked in the face by Eva she freaking backflips off of the second story onto her bike and runs him over literally runs the motorcycle up his face Ocelot runs away like a little wiener Eva wants to kill him snake stops him because he's young Eva comments that snake is gonna regret stopping her but I'm not so sure about that Eva goes to be badass on her motorcycle and we will meet up with her later. On our way to the lab, we come across Ocelot again in a ravine and we have an epic gun battle. In the middle of the duel, the pain interrupts with his hornets. Ocelot ends up getting away and away from the hornets and Snake is left falling down a ravine because he's getting stung all over the place and now we're gonna go meet the pain. The pain is some sort of crazy person that has magical powers that makes all these hornets listen to his will and he can make them into guns and it's basically this epic battle. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. The pain and then reveals his face and it's terrifying like he's been stung 8,000 million times he looks like popcorn and we end up defeating him he explodes and all of his hornets end up dying we need the bees now more than ever after the pain fight we come across Volgan and crew at a warehouse Volgan just like loves torturing Tatiana and it's pretty f***ed up Ocelot plays Russian roulette with Sokolov and in Otacon fashion, he pees himself. The boss has had enough. She's sick of people screwing around with him, but that would have been his shot. The boss tells Volgan that the pain has died and that our little CIA agent is still alive and well. He's pissed off. He takes it out on a wall. We see the end. He is snoozing on his wheelchair. And if you are quick enough after this cutscene and you shoot him in the head with a sniper rifle, he will die. You will not have to face him in battle. It's pretty awesome. We also see a look at the Fear. He's crazy. He's running on water and he's just overall a weirdo. Snake finally gets to the lab and infiltrates it as a scientist, even though if you look at him, he definitely.
definitely does not look like a scientist, but he's wearing glasses and a lab coat, so that makes him a scientist. So we need to infiltrate and find Sokolov. And instead of meeting Sokolov, we meet Granin, a weapon scientist of the Soviet Union and head of the glorious Granin Design Bureau. Granin is the creator of Metal Gear, but Volgan wanted to fund the Shagohod instead, and thus went with Sokolov's plans. There's a familiar scientist face on the wall. We see our first look at a Metal Gear bipedal tank. Metal gear. Colonel Volgan has the philosopher's legacy and it is basically a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of money. Granin helps us by explaining that there's an underground tunnel leading to Grozny Grad, which is where the Shagohod is stored and that we need to get Sokolov out and destroy the Shagohod. Those are his only requests and that is why he's helping us and also because we complimented him on his shoes. We get a key card and we are sent on our way. As we make our way to the underground tunnel, we come across the fear, which we then have to deal with and he is like this crazy spider person and it's an epic battle where he is is literally invisible and Naked Snake needs to use thermal goggles to see him and defeat him. It's a pain so he should actually be called the pain instead of the fear. There's a crazy exchange of eye contact and then he explodes into a million different arrows. Talking to Eva we find out that there is the underground tunnel through the mountains so we need to get to the mountains and by getting to the mountains we have to go through the end. The end is a super epic sniper with his friend the parrot. If he ends up sneaking up behind you you end up back at the laboratory in the jail cell so it really sucks. Now you would assume that the end would be really really slow but he's actually super super fast and it's crazy. Naked Snake ends up getting the best of the end. His teeth fly out. It's crazy and he explodes into a million butterflies or moths or whatever the hell those things are. We begin our trek in the underground passageway and we come across the world's longest ladder. It has the snake eater theme song playing in the background and it is so epic and you can fall to your death here and I have. Snake reaches the mountain base and gets to meet up with Eva. We catch her in a not so great situation. We find out that Volgan is a sadist and he's basically just torturing her because he just loves it and he's a piece of crap and he needs to die. There obviously is a connection between these two characters but Naked Snake is keeping her at arm's length and uh, she's trying man, she's trying. She's using all her goods. They discuss Grozny Grad and where Sokolov is being held. In order to get into the West Wing you literally need to be in Volgan's class. She tells us about Major Ivan Rykov and we gotta pretend that we are him. And who is Rykov? Well he happens to be one of Volgan's lovers and he happens to really look like Raiden from Metal Gear Solid 2. So we need to steal his clothes, wear a mask, and get in. Eva gives Snake the underground tunnel key and tells him that she's secured an aircraft for escape, a wig. Eva leaves on her motorcycle to go play Tatiana. Volgan is just being crazy at Grozny Grad, playing bowling with barrels in Granin's body. It's crazy. They're trying to figure out who is the spy and how the CIA agent is getting through everything. Eva or Tatiana returns and Ocelot grows suspicious of her. The boss informs Volgan that the fear and the end have been taken care of by Naked Snake and he is pissed for good reason. Ocelot seems a little impressed. Naked Snake makes his way through the underground tunnel and he runs into the Fury. The Fury was the first human in outer space, but on re-entry he got burns all over his body and that's why he's in the suit. He became a pyromaniac and was obsessed with burning the world and he dons a flamethrower and a jetpack. Naked Snake defeats the Fury and we don our scientists get up again and try to find where Rakoff is. Snake takes him over by the lockers and then steals his outfit. We find out that he's got a cute little pair of Thunderbolt underwear for his man, Volgan, and there happens to be a picture of Raiden inside of the locker. Dressed as Raykov and wearing this really creepy Raykov mask, Naked Snake makes his way into the West Wing. We see Eva talking to Sokolov and Sokolov handing her some sort of film. Snake doesn't let Eva see him. He seems a little bit suspicious. We are reunited with Sokolov. He is super excited to see us. He explains that he's already finished preparations for phase two on the Shagohod and that we are too late, meaning that it is operational. And he basically just explains how scary it is, how yeah, they're planning to mass produce it. We need to destroy the entire facility and the Shagohod with it. Snake has to get C3 because C4 doesn't exist yet to blow up the Shagohod fuel tanks. We learn that Tatiana isn't Sokolov's wife and that she is Volgan's lover. He gave her all the experimental data for the Shagohod, so now Eva has that. Sokolov doesn't really want to go anywhere. He doesn't want to be rescued because he knows that no matter where he goes, he's just going to end up being a puppet for the government and have to create weapons of mass destruction. Volgan interrupts their conversation and Snake quickly puts his disguise back on. Ew. But Volgan, uh, you know, he knows his lover well and he knows that this is not his Rakoff. Volgan points a weapon at Snake, shoots Sokolov's kneecaps, and Snake puts him on his ass. 
But who comes in? Of course, it's the boss, and she bests him once again. What is this? The third, fourth, fourth time? What is this fairy disguise? It's a great line. She says, "You stay out of this, Volgan." Volgan gets put in his place. <laughs> Volgan then explains that he's gonna take Snake, get some information out of him, and then basically beat the living crap out of him because of what he did to Rakoff. We wake up in a torture chamber. We hear Volgan torturing Sokolov to death, and Volgan just has a lot of fun electrocuting us and beating the crap out of us and bringing us really close to death. Volgan believes that Naked Snake is after the philosopher's legacy. The boss tries to get the torture to stop, knowing that he has been trained not to break. A tracking device falls out of Naked Snake during the torture, and the boss says that she planted it there on him so that the Cobra unit could find ways to sneak up on him and attack him. Volgan accuses the boss of being a spy since the Cobras have all fallen and they were tracking his movements the entire time. Why wouldn't they have gotten the upper hand on him and doesn't believe that she's on his side? Volgan then orders the boss to cut out Naked Snake's eye to prove she is on his side. He says that you made him a soldier and now you will un make him a soldier. The knife gets super, super close and Tatiana actually steps in and puts herself in between the boss and him. She says that he suffered enough. Ocelot doesn't understand why Tatiana would go out of her way to protect him. He has an idea that she's a double agent and that she is, in fact, the spy they've been looking for. Ocelot wants to play Russian roulette with Eva to understand if she's the spy or not. Naked Snake is clearly paying attention and knows that that next bullet is going to go off and he bumps Ocelot and inadvertently makes him shoot him in the eye. The boss is pissed, bitch slaps Ocelot, and now satiates Volgan's need for one of Naked Snake's eyes because Ocelot has just now shot one out. Tatiana is crying, Volgan is happy. Ocelot says, ooh, I really do love the taste of torture. She shoots him in the leg and leaves him with a weapon unloaded. She whispers to him to run. Eva tells Snake that she has his gear and gives him an escape route to meet up with her. You get to decide how Naked Snake gets out of his cell. You actually find out that the guard is a relative of Johnny. You can do the fake death pill. Any way you do it, you get Snake out of the cell. Snake can't follow the escape route Eva left for him because of Volgan's men, and Snake has to go through the sewer system and ends up being chased by the Ocelot unit. Snake leaps off the waterfall into the river and basically almost drowns. He wakes up to the river being on fire, and we meet the sorrow. Every person you have killed is now going to be in this river. It's a pretty interesting boss fight considering you can't hit him. You just have to walk. The Sorrow was a partner of the boss and the Cobra unit. The boss and the Sorrow had a child together, but it was taken from them by the philosophers. They both ended up on opposite sides of the battlefield, and he ordered her to kill him to protect their son. We learn later that that child is Ocelot. We make it through Sorrow's river and find Eva. When we arrive, she gives us an eye patch, which becomes a freaking epic symbol of this game and his gear. He eats a snake. How fitting. She tries to seduce him again. Eva explains that there's a ton leading to Grozny Grad and gives him the C3 to destroy the Shagohod. Sneaking back into the Shagohod hangar, we play C3 on the fuel tanks, and just as we do the timer, Volgan and Ocelot interrupt us. Eva is laying on the floor, and Volgan has discovered that she was a spy. He found her with the Philosopher's Legacy on her, and he's clearly infuriated. Volgan decides to give the legacy to the boss for safe keepings and challenges Snake to a fight. Ocelot watches the battle from above, and when Volgan gets messed up, he orders Ocelot to shoot Snake, but Ocelot refuses, tells him to fight like a man. Man. Snake defeats Vulgan and escapes from the Shagohod hangar just in time to meet up with Eva before the Shagohod busts through the building and is clearly still fully functional because Vulgan is now controlling it. He says those great words, it's not over yet. They jump on her motorcycle and take off. Even Snake blow up a bridge in hopes to take the Shagohod down, but of course it's not that easy. He is a cockroach, he just will not die. Vulgan comes back and he's controlling the Shagohod with his electricity and Snake has to defeat him. And boom, he does again. He starts popping like the 4th of July. Snake and Eva head towards the wig being chased down by Volgan's men. They end up crashing and Eva is impaled by a tree branch and Snake has to help lead her to safety and to get to the wig. But before they leave, Snake has to have his final showdown with the boss. In a beautiful field of flowers, the boss demands us finish our mission. She explains that she defected to the Soviet Union because her Cobra unit was being torn apart by the Cold War. The CIA had sent her on a mission and abandoned her when they needed air support so she was betrayed by the US so she turned her back on them and went into hiding. After telling Snake her story, she orders a missile attack on the very spot they are standing. She explains that they have 10 minutes to fight. In one of the greatest battles in video game history, the boss falls. She gives Snake the Philosopher's Legacy and her gun, the Patriot, ordering Snake to complete his mission by taking her life. One of the hardest button pushes you'll ever make. 
Snake boards the wig with Eva, but Ocelot pops out of nowhere and wants to fight Snake one last time. They have a duel and they both come out unharmed. <laughs> Ocelot bounces out of the plane and they leave. Eva and Snake reach a safe house and canoodle, as two canoodlers will do. Snake wakes up in a post-coitus bliss and finds a message waiting for him, but it's not really the message he's looking for. <laughs> it's a message from Eva explaining that she was a spy sent from China to steal the philosopher's legacy. She was going to kill Adam, but he never showed up, so she took on the role of Eva without having to do so. With the legacy and the information from Sokolov on the Shagohod, China would finally catch up in the arms race, and that was her mission. Eva confides that she's a member of the Philosophers and that she could trick anyone except the boss. The boss saw right through her. Eva was meant to kill Snake, but agreed not to because the boss made her promise. Eva explains that the boss never defected to the Soviet Union and that it was all a setup by the U.S. government to get their hands on the legacy. Snake is due to meet with the president because his mission was a success, and he is awarded the title of Big Boss, but he basically wants nothing to do with any of these people. He sees Zero, he sees all these a-holes who basically set up the boss, made him kill his mentor, and she was innocent and was actually the biggest boss of them all because she sacrificed herself for her country. The boss's original mission was to steal the philosopher's legacy, but everything changed after Volgan launched the nuke. To stop the Soviet leader from bombing the hell out of America, the president of the United States said they would prove it wasn't them by killing the boss and basically blaming her for the actions. The boss was aware of this and accepted her fate, wanting to be killed by none other than her protege in order to literally save the world from nuclear war. She will go down in official history as a war criminal, but I think she wanted you, of all people, to know the truth. We see Snake leave flowers for the boss and salutes his mentor. One of the saddest moments, end credits roll, Way to Fall by Star Sailor plays, and if you don't cry, then you don't have a heart. The end credits, there's always an end, end, end credit. Uh, we hear Ocelot talking to the KGB, ensuring that it's finally their time to shine. He then makes another call to the DCI and explains that the legacy Eva had wasn't real, and the real version was heading back to America. He has Granin's blueprints for the Metal Gear that could be used for America. He was a triple spy and was the real Adam and working for the CIA the whole time. And that is the story of Metal Gear Solid 3, one of the greatest stories in the series, and I highly, highly suggest you play it if you haven't. It is well worth it. Thank you guys for watching and listening. I will be making more of these if you guys like them, so let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye.